Hey there friends, I'm Leo and today I'm going to be finally showcasing a game that I've been working on for a while. This is Defender Bros, a game where you collect resources during the day to build your defenses and survive the night. As the days pass you're going to be getting experience to buy upgrades which will make you stronger, pretty much like a roguelike game. Eventually you're going to end up dying and when going back to the main menu you're going to be able to buy permanent skills that are going to make you stay alive for longer. The game will have a progression system that is infinite, kind of similar to games like Cookie Clicker, but with more game mechanics and more levels. The idea with this game is to have something that is simple, but deep, fun and addictive. Something in the veins of Vampire Survivors and Brotato, but with the added bonus that you can play with your friends. Or you can just play by yourself as well. I've already launched the Steam page for the game, so don't forget to put it on your wishlist. And I've also created a new area on the channel Discord server. Now there is space for both Spark Muts and Defender Bros, as well as new voice channels. I'm gonna be sending 5 Defender Bros keys and 5 Spark Muts keys right after uploading this video. So if you manage to grab one, hit me up so we can play together. But anyway, how does the game work? In the game you're gonna be controlling this little soldier guy here, and you can walk around using the WS and D keys and you can aim using the mouse. If you're playing on a controller, it is gonna work like a regular twin stick shooter, with the right analog stick working as your aim. You're gonna start off with four guns, and you can switch between them using the numbers above the WSND keys or the D-pad on your controller. Each gun is going to have a different fire rate, damage and behavior. The shotgun, for example, shoots in a spray in front of you, while the rocket launcher is going to shoot a separate type of projectile that blows up on impact. Weapons have a different ammo quantity, with the exception of the pistol, which has infinite ammo. I've made a lot of effort to make these controls feel as smooth, intuitive and just as good as it possibly can. But one thing that I realized is that it's pretty much impossible to play a game like this without aim assist, especially on the controller. At the start of development, when I tried to play the game on a controller, it was hell on earth. I wasn't able to actually land any hits on the enemy if the enemy was just a little far away. So I made an aim assist sort of pass while updating where you're aiming. This is going to detect hits with a bigger range and adjust your aiming towards that. All of these lines here that you're seeing are detection passes, and it is going to prioritize whichever enemy is closest to the center. Besides the guns, you also have the medkit. In fact, you're gonna start off with three of those. You can heal yourself by pressing 5 on the keyboard or X on the controller to equip the medkit, and then hold down the left mouse button or RT to heal yourself. I've also done something that I thought was pretty cool. Basically, you can heal your friend just like in Left 4 Dead. To do that, just get close and look at your partner and then hold down the right mouse button or LT. On the map you spawn, there are four roads that each lead into caverns. These caverns are where the enemies can spawn during the night to attack you. Every morning you can see from which side these enemies are gonna come from by checking the minimap or getting close to a cavern. Then there's going to be this little warning sign. To do this mechanic I was inspired by Half-Life 2, Episode 2 if I'm not mistaken. There, there's a part where you have a cave full of enemies and you gotta defend Alex alongside some Vortigaunts. This was one of my favorite parts of the Half-Life franchise, I think, for some reason. I don't know why, but ever since I was a kid, I always loved the mechanic of building defenses and holding off against enemies, just building in general. Another huge inspiration is a game called They Are Billions, which is amazing, by the way. Okay, so now that we know from which side the enemies are gonna come from, you're gonna need to get money in order to build your defenses to hold off through the night. The enemies only have one goal, and that is to destroy your base at the center of the map. The game only ends when your base is destroyed, and if you take damage and die, your character is going to enter a fallen state. You will get up either if a friend helps you or automatically when the night ends. In order to get money, you will explore the map during the day and you can press E on these drop boxes here to get money, ammo and medkits. On the map there's going to be enemies as well, and killing those enemies will reward you with EXP to level up. When leveling up, you're gonna be able to pick between three different options that are gonna make you stronger. Like an option that will increase your running speed, or an option that is going to increase the damage of your turrets. So each time you play, you are gonna make a completely different build that changes how you make your defenses. For example, for now there's only one offensive building, but my idea is to have at least 4 or 5 in the final game, like a missile turret or a flamethrower turret. Then if you get a lot of skills that make a specific building stronger, it is going to incentivize you to make a new setup to defend your base using more of those types of buildings. In this game I'm basically trying to marry the tower defense genre with the roguelike genre. 
So after a couple of minutes, the sun starts setting and the game gives you 60 seconds to prepare yourself. Now you can press tab and select something to build. There's the basic turret, which is going to shoot at any enemy that enters its vision. Then there's the barricade, which serves to hold down enemies and has more health than a regular turret at a lower cost. Then there's the landmine, which explodes once and deals damage to everything around it. And then there's the barbed wire, which makes enemies slower. This is really good for when you have a corridor of enemies with turrets on both sides, and if you can grab the skill that increases this slowdown effect, it is gonna get pretty OP. All buildings can be leveled up inside of a match. They are gonna start at level 1 and can be upgraded up to level 3. Each level is going to double all of the attributes to that building. So if you get a lot of power-ups that increases the health of a turret, then increasing its level is going to duplicate that base. So leveling up your buildings is something that is always going to be relevant, even if you buy a lot of skill points on the main menu that makes you even stronger. There's still a lot of stuff to do in regards to building variations and more buildings, but I'm already very happy with how this system is turning out. So when the 60 seconds timer runs out, the night starts. Then you're gonna need to hold off until sunrise using your defenses. As soon as the night ends, all enemies are gonna turn around and head back. The day counter is going to increase and all of the enemies are gonna become stronger as a result. Every day the enemies are gonna get stronger by something like 40%, I'm still balancing it. And then every 10 days the enemies are gonna get stronger by something like a thousand percent. Again, I'm still balancing it. My idea is to have a boss that shows up every 10 nights and you can only move on to the next day after defeating it. Then you're gonna get some sort of a checkpoint that allows you to start the game from day 10 or day 20, so on and so forth. I want the game to become a lot more difficult right after the boss, kind of like going from Torment 5 to Torment 6 on Diablo. In order to help you orient yourself through the level and the time of day, I've also made a minimap on the corner of the screen with a clock around it. On this part of the HUD you can see the day, your money, your objective, how many enemies you've killed and what time of day it is. I did start by making something similar to what I already have on SparkMuds, which is basically this camera that is always rendering the map from above in real time. But using a minimap like this made my FPS go from 60 to 30 on my Steam Deck, so I had to remake that from scratch. On SparkMuds, there's not much I can do about this, since the map is done procedurally using the Voxel plugin. And in order to make a full 2D map, I would need to make the full generation procedural algorithm by myself, because then I could just place the 2D elements using that same algorithm. But I'm not really that good with stuff like that, and if I were to learn how to do it, it would completely consume an entire year of development, for sure. But in Defender Bros, the map is handcrafted. So what I did then was take a snapshot of the map as seen from above, using a post-processing effect similar to the one I made for SparkMuds. And then I threw the map into Photoshop, touched it up a little bit, and then put that back into the game. I followed this tutorial from Ryan Laley, where he uses trigonometry to determine where each thing is in relation to the player. I didn't really understand it, but I followed through and it's working. Visually it's the same, but now I didn't lose a single frame on the deck. So here you're gonna have the players that are marked with these white arrows, then you have the enemies which are marked with these uh, red arrow thingies, and you have the drop boxes marked in gold. Also, a cool effect I made was, when it becomes nighttime, the map goes from a brown color to a dark blue. Now, speaking on the amount of enemies you've killed, I made this system where when the enemy gets hit, they're gonna register whoever hit them in an array. Then when the enemy dies, they're gonna reward the player with a kill count and EXP. This means that if two players shoot at the same enemy, they are both going to receive EXP and a kill count. The coolest thing about this is that if your turret deals damage to an enemy, the enemy will still reward you the XP because the turret belongs to you. I'll be talking more about multiplayer in a bit. With the skill counter, I always want it to increment back in the main menu. So we will always have this number going up as you play the game more and more, until it becomes this really large number. Kind of similar to something like that rising. I don't know, I think it would be kind of cool to have something like that in your profile, right? And then other players can check that out and see how much you played, basically. Imagine like a guy with 50,000 kills under their belt. If anyone would play my game for that long, that is. In the game, you're gonna find scrappers, which are these most basic enemies that just melee attack you. Then there's the boners, that's their name, which are these skeleton mobs that throw bones at you. And then there are the bulkers, which are very slow and have a lot of health and shield. And finally, there's the maulers, which scream and run really fast. 
From all that I have playtested with people, whenever someone dies it's because of this enemy. They have an acid spit attack that is really fast and needs to be nerfed. The enemy AI is more on the simplistic side, because I really think it shouldn't be that complex, especially for a game like this. Beyond these enemies though, I want to add bosses which will have more complex mechanics. There will be the boss that shows up at nighttime, and two different bosses that are gonna show up at daytime. Killing one of these bosses during the day will either grant you a lot of experience or a lot of money, which will then help you on your run. But you must be wondering, how does all of that work in multiplayer? Well, each player is going to have their individual stats, right? The stats of your guns and of your buildings are going to be individual to you, and the skills that you'll be getting are also only going to affect you. So if in the same match I grab a lot of skill points that help a specific building, I can let my friend know and we can combine our buildings so that I can place more of those and we can kind of combine our builds. I think multiplayer in this game is going to be a lot of fun to play with friends, to just like survive as long as you can and then level up your stuff and then try again and survive more time, then go to another map, it's gonna be very fun. It kind of reminds me of the time I used to play Dungeon Defenders all day long with a friend of mine, back when life was simple. So I am actually pretty happy that I decided to start off development with multiplayer in mind from the get-go. Even though it is very challenging, multiplayer in this game is actually the reason why it took me two months to do this instead of two weeks, honestly. Literally everything that happens on screen needs to be updated from client to server, and then server to all clients. Not only that, but there's stuff that needs to happen only on client or on client first, otherwise you're gonna see lag when playing as this client. This was actually a huge challenge for me, and I had some really interesting bugs that came with it. For example, there was this bug that only happened to the client if they got far from the server, where enemies would not deal damage to you anymore. I found out that if the enemies are far from the server, they are not rendered, and if they are not rendered, they won't execute their attack animations. This is so we can gain performance on things that do not need to be on the screen, and is not only needed but also a really good thing to have. So it was only playing the attack animation on the client, which was being ignored server side. So then I had to change the hit detection to something a little wonky like a delay node, but it ended up working as intended even from further away. It feels kind of wrong to be doing a delay node, but I genuinely don't know of a better way to do that. Um, I could try to, for example, if the enemy plays the animation, the client requests the server to then deal the damage. But what happens if you have four clients, or like one host and three clients, all around the same enemy? The enemy is going to play the animation on everyone so it means that it is three requests to deal damage. So that would make me need to do an even more convoluted sort of solution where the delay node actually works, even though it feels wrong to do. You know, the way that I was actually used to doing that was with an animation notify, because then it is always very intrinsic to the actual attack animation, and it is not only intuitive, but works really well. On the main menu, I've also implemented a Steam lobby system, here you can open your lobby to the public and then anyone can search and join your lobby. And when everyone marks down as ready, the leader can press play and the multiplayer session is created. Something that is really annoying to implement in Unreal is gamepad controls for buttons and widgets on the main menu for example. It is something that does not work nearly as well as I needed it to. I had to work on my own container and focus system in order to accommodate for things like this, and in the end it worked really well honestly. If you guys want to play the game using the controller, play away because this works 100% with a controller now. I'm learning more and more about how to develop good game mechanics that are simple, focused and fun with this project, and I'm gonna bring all of this experience back to SparkMods. Now I officially have two ongoing projects, and I'm gonna be swapping between them in order to avoid burnout. This way my mental health is going to thank me, and I'll be able to crunch from one project to the other without leaving the honeymoon phase. Because basically, when you start working on a project, you kind of get really hyped with this honeymoon sort of phase, right? Uh, and then after a while, especially if you're working on a solo project, this really boggles you down and you get really bad uh, mental health-wise. So this way I can get really productive and I can crunch one project and then crunch the other project. And this way I can produce a lot more and I can be a lot happier doing that as well. My focus right now is to release Defender Bros in early access at around April with two maps and more building types. And of course with the level up system and infinite progression all finalized. 
After that, I'm going to be alternating between huge updates for Spark Muts and then huge updates for Defender Bros, which is going to add more maps, more enemies and more buildings. The idea is that the final version of Defender Bros is going to have at least 5 unique maps, all with their own enemies, bosses, and after adding each map, I'm also going to add new buildings that is going to spice up the gameplay even more. So subscribe to the channel to see more updates on the game, and don't forget to check out the Steam page and add to your wishlists. Also join the Discord server so that we can play Defender Bros together. In case there's no more keys there, you can become a patron and receive a Spark Mutts and a Defender Bros key. I'm Leo, signing out.